your host, Sean Lynn, in the pub for a dram with friends where we talk about faith, family, food, and fun. Pull up a chair and I'll pour you a drink. Episode 68. We are extremely blessed to welcome a Calgary legend into the pub today. Sit back as I pour Joe Forzani a dram. So, welcome to another episode of A Dram with Friends. I am extremely excited to have a Calgary legend in my house, Joe Forzani. Welcome, Joe. Oh, thanks, Sean. Well, so, nice to be here. So, for the people in the pub that don't, they're obviously not from Calgary, who don't know Joe Forzani, who is Joe Forzani? Well, I mean... <laughs> As I pour you a drink. I, I always consider myself just an ordinary guy, so I mean... Uh, but I'm, uh, I was born and raised in Calgary here in Bridgeland, Riverside. Uh, uh, my mother and father are both Italian immigrants, and uh, I went to uh, Catholic schools all the way through from grade 1 to grade 12. I went to St. Angeles, St. Alphonsus, and St. Mary's. My two brothers followed me, and they are they're at the junior elementary and junior high, and they went to St. Francis. Okay. And the only reason I stayed, I was north of the river. The only reason I stayed at St. Mary's was because... Uh, they had senior football, and, and St. Francis had just opened, and they never had senior football for a couple of years. So uh, I just stayed at St. And St. Mary's, and I had a great football coach there by the name of Bill Casanova. Oh, okay. Phenomenal person. Uh, he was from Toronto, came out here to play professional baseball, and, um, and he ended up playing for the Stampeders as well, both, both sports. So it's kind of very unique. Wow. And uh, he really taught me a lot about football. And I think that's where my sort of quasi-legend started, was, was through him, or maybe by him. He taught me a lot. And then my brothers followed along, and we ended up being, being somewhat of uh, sport heroes in the city. Yeah, and like uh, Tony Spolantini was in here yep. a couple uh, weeks ago, and, and he talked about, when we talked about families in in Calgary and, and the example, and he brought up the Forzanis and just oh, okay. what, what an example they were for him as a young boy growing up uh, and, and contributing to the community. And uh, you guys have a long storied history here in Calgary as, as, a, as a recognizable name. Well, you know, Sean, I, I mean, you know, up until grade 12, I mean, I was just an ordinary, ordinary guy. Like, I mean, just an ordinary, just, you know, moseyed along, got in high school. I remember when I, you know, this is kind of funny if, if, if you don't mind me relating a story. Um, it's what we're in the pub I, for. I, I was <laughs> junior high school. I went to St. Alphonsus, like I said, and I played a little bit of football. I played. A, I, I found that I was a fairly good athlete. So, so I went in high school in grade ten at St. Mary's, and uh, the first day of class, I'll never forget. I was walking down the hallway, and Bill Casanova, who I've got tons of respect for came up to me and said, Joe Frizzani, he said, I want you to show up for the football team. I said, yeah, I don't know much about the game. I never really played football yet, but yeah, he said, I've, I've heard you got good speed and I'd like you to try out. I, Sounds good to me. So I went home and uh, I talked to my mother and I said to my mother, I said, you know, Bill Casanova would like me to come out for the football team. She said, absolutely not. No way. Football is a dangerous sport. You can get hurt. I don't like it. I've heard nothing but bad reviews. You're not playing. Sorry. That's it. So next day I went to school and I, and I, I knocked on Bill Casanova's door and I said, uh, I said, Mr. Casanova, I said, my mother said I can't play. Uh, she said it was too dangerous and, and I guess I, I can't play. So, I, you know, it's too bad, you know, it would have been nice. So he said, what's your mother's phone number? And so I gave it to her, <laughs> to him. So then that he went home, never heard anything else. One night I went home. And my mother, first thing she says to me, she said, Joe, Bill Casanova called me today. <laughs> and he said, what a nice chap. And I said, yeah, yeah he seems really good, yeah. He says, I got a meeting with him at 4 o'clock tomorrow, 
and I want you there. And my mother, I love her to death. Oh, God, she was a great individual. So anyway, I, um, she came down. We met with Bill Casanova. And Bill Casanova said, he said, you know, Mrs. Ferzani, if you deny your, your kids a chance to do something that they're good at and that they like, then you're really not doing justice as a parent. As a parent, we've got to lead. Our job is to lead by example, and, and encourage whatever it is that they're good at and what they want to do. Make a long story short, my mother said, yeah, that's a good point. She said, okay, it's against my wishes, but let's do it. No, right on. So we do it, we shake hands. Mr. Casanova said, you know what? We had practice tomorrow at 3.30, whatever. So as we're, we walked out of the school, I'll never forget it. She said, Joe, she said, you need football shoes, don't you? And I said, yeah, I do. She says, where do you get them? I said, well, there's a really good sports store. It's before Frizzani Group. Yep. There's a really good sports store down on 8th Avenue called Premier Cycle and Sports. She said, let's go. I'm going to buy you the best pair. <laughs> Went in there, and I think I bought a pair of Riddell. You know those, you know those Riddell? Yeah. Uh, you know, with the, they're, they're like wide receiver shoes. She bought me a pair of those, and uh, from then it was history. Wow. Isn't that something? That is. And then I get my two brothers, and we all go on and play for the Stampeders. You know, it's amazing. And that's that's a rarity, A, that three brothers make it into professional sports, and let alone on the same team. So that's uh, quite quite an accomplishment. Well, you know, Sean, I I mean, I'm not here to to blow my whistle by any chance, but what an honor to be able to come from an Italian neighborhood, uh, to be just go as far as you can. And then I, I got a football scholarship to Utah State University. I played four years down there. I got, actually got drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. I went to their training camp, didn't make it. Came back to Calgary, and then my brother John went to Utah State. Came back to Calgary, and Tommy went down to Utah State. Same thing, came back to Calgary. And then we all played together for three years. So, and I think that's where we sort of got a bit of a name, uh, the Frisani brothers. We played three years, 75, 6, and 7. So I got a couple questions. Mm-hmm. A, I got to ask, was oh, yeah. was Father Wheelahan at St. Yes, Mary's at the time? he was. Oh, he was a tough guy. <laughs> but see, I played senior football, so I missed him. Oh, okay. But um, he was a, he was a, he played, he coached the junior team. Okay. I wish I would have had him, but he was a hard-nosed, oh, like he, was, <laughs> he used to come up to me and kind of grab me by the arm and he said, Joe, don't ever quit. You know, you do your best. You got good at you're a good spirited guy, you know, you do your best. Yeah, very, very, uh, admi- I admired him a lot. My, uh, my oldest son won the Father Wheelahan scholarship. Uh, so oh, he, yeah. uh, so that's why I had to ask. Oh, yeah, and, no. He's a very, very nice man. He taught social studies. Okay. And uh, I had him in class, and he always used to say, Joe, you sit here. He wanted to make sure that I would learn, you know, being an athlete, you know. Is great. Then the next question is: Sean, Am I toasting you here? Yeah, sure. Are we okay? We're live. We're, we're live. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So the, I got you a nice. Lefroy uh, quarter cast. You said you like something with a little, a little smoke. You can pete. Great. But cheers. So, I love scotch. There you go. I have one drink a day. There so you this go. This is it. This is it. Yeah. So right. I, I'm, I'm providing today's uh, uh, sample. Very so. nice of you to do that, man. Well, I cheers. enjoy it too. So. uh so, and then the, the second question I have is mm-hmm. three Italian Catholic boys yeah. end up in Utah. <laughs> How's that's that a, happen? That's a good question. That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> My mother, I, you know, bless her soul, I'm sure she's with the Lord right now, but I'll well, tell you what, she, she questioned that. <laughs> she questioned me, Utah, Mormon, Mormon country, all this stuff, you know. I, uh, when I finished grade, uh, I finished grade 12. You know, Sean, it's a funny thing. You're, you, you're, you're an athlete and you, you, you sort of followed the sports, but you know, uh, grade 10 and 11, I never, I hardly remember it. I, grade 10, I played a little bit yeah. backup role here and there. Grade 11, I, um, uh, I got hurt and I didn't play much. And I can remember coming into grade 12 my last year. So I never, I never, uh, Sean, I was average. I was average. I don't know. But Bill Casanova came up to me at the start of the season. He said, Joe, he said, you're going to be my starting fullback. And I'm counting on you. And I went, 
oh, really? You know, I'm going to, yep, you're going to start, you're going to play, you're, you, you've got it, and it's your time. So, Sean, honestly, up until that time, I never played much. And um, all of a sudden, it seemed like I matured. I don't know, I don't know, like, I just felt like the athletic side of me came forward, and uh, almost like God was blessing me at that time to lead me, you know, in a, in a direction of athletics. And I had a great year, grade 12. Like I led the the league in, in touchdowns and uh, whatever. But I had a really good year. We got beat the last play of the game from Henry Wisewood. And you know what? We scored a touchdown and I clipped the guy. I was a blocking back and I went out and he turned his back and I, I knocked him down and our back scored. And I got the call for the, you know, that was disappointing. Oh, yeah. But anyway, those are small, you know. But uh, from there, I uh, I went to, uh, there was a couple of grades. I needed to pick up, so I went to Mount Royal College. And at Mount Royal College, I had a football team, junior football, before the Colts. And uh, Bill Casanova came over to coach him. Oh, wow. So, oh, my God. So now he followed me there, and I followed him there, whatever. Played a year there, had a good year, and uh, Stan Peters phoned me up. Said, you want to come to training camp? So I went, well... You know, and my mother's going, well, you know, Joe, you, you, I can't believe you're doing this, but yeah, you have to go. And I go, yeah, I took it. So I went to training camp for two weeks. Met all these all these um, players from the university, American, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to university. Oh, wow. And Sean, it was really nice. I got to meet him. Met Herm Harrison was a rookie at the time. Oh, cool. He was an older rookie. And, uh, oh, man, there was Wayne Harris and all yeah. these, you know. And they had me as a, I was a running back at the time. And so... Uh, you know, I had two weeks there. It was a phenomenal experience. And then I had two or three or four or five scholarship offers that flew to the schools. But the school that really, I really wanted to go to the University of Utah. That, that, was, that was a real, that was really nice, but I didn't have the grades to get in. But at Utah State, I did. Oh, okay. we, we, our grading system here, you know, you back in the day, we were 65, 70, 75 percent, you know. Yeah. They worked on that. Whereas in, in the U.S., the school is easier in the U.S. I hate to tell you that. I, I don't want to be it's offensive true. <laughs> to the audience. But I'll tell you what. Uh, I got into Utah State, and all of a sudden I had a change of spirit there. I really wanted to study because nobody in my family got a degree. You know, my mother, dad, my aunt, uncle, they were all labor workers. And I don't know, I just wanted to get a degree, and I worked my butt off. And, you know, I ended up with almost all A's. I, I, all of a sudden, <laughs> schooling came, came to me. And, you know, I, I, I just did well. And... and uh, so that, that's how it was. Uh, I was fortunate to have good early early games and people followed me. And um, my brothers, and then we sort of came back to Calgary. And my brother had the idea to open up for Zanny's Locker Room. The so where was the first one? First door was on 17th Avenue, right across from Western Canada High School. Okay. 17th Avenue and 5th Street. There's a little, yeah. there's a little uh, shopping center there. And uh, that, that's where we started. That was my, it was my brother's idea. He brought us together. That was he's, John? John. Yeah. He said, you know what? He's, he's He was the business. He had a really good business mind, you know. Um, but he said, look, at, we're all, the three brothers, we're all playing together here. And he said, people, we should get into a job that uh, people would really remember us by. I said, yeah, great idea. So he, he came back a few months later. And at Utah State, you remember uh, those two football, Merlin Olson? Little House in the Prairie, big yeah, guy. Yeah. He played for Utah State. He was he, oh, was, okay. a, he was an all-pro with the Rams for 13 years. Oh, wow. Well, his brother, I played with his brother, and he played with John. And John went to visit him. His brother played for the Rams, too, and John went to visit him just after his university. And he saw that these running shoe stores were opening up in L.A. called the Foot Locker. Opened up a couple of stores, and he looked at these, and he went, oh, what a great idea. Came back to Calgary. I remember... We met at my house, my brother John, Basil Bark, he became a real good friend, um, Tom and myself. We sat around, and John sat around the table, and he called it out. He said, you know what, We're gonna, let's open up this store called Frizzani's Locker Room, and we'll do sports shoes. And that's right at the very start when, when athletic footwear started to climb. We had a bit of a luck there, but really started to climb. Well, there, we there, opened up there the, really wasn't a choice No, before. there wasn't. Do you remember that, John? Oh, well, maybe, maybe. There, there wasn't a selection. Nike was... No. Yeah. So <laughs> so we opened up this store and right at the front, and all of a sudden, Nike, Adidas, and all these, these these lines started to come forward, and we were right at the front end. Yeah. 
And as a matter of fact, you know what we used to do? We used to uh, play on a we used to play on a Saturday, and uh, or a Sunday, and then go go sign autographs on Monday and Tuesday. Or if we played played on Saturday, we we signed autographs Friday afternoon. We used to tell. So that's how we started to sort of establish somewhat of a of a name in the sports industry in the city. Well, uh, growing up, so I I grew up in the Northwest here and. The store I remember was when you guys opened one in Markham Mall. Oh, yeah, that was a good store. And, yep. uh, yeah, and I see your brother come through. I, I packed groceries at Woodward's Food Floor. Oh, really? <laughs> so uh, yep. that's where I met my loving bride. Of, oh, that's great. I packed her groceries, and then we got married a few years later, and that was uh, 37 years ago we got married. So oh, wow. It's, uh, it's been a while, and then... and. So we belong to St. Peter's and that's where your mom was yep. all the time because she watched all our kids grow up as, uh, oh. cause like you say, she was right up front there oh. and, and, uh, we were quite, we've been quite involved in the parish for some time and yeah, fond memories of her sitting there and. Well, you know, Sean, uh, I can remember from, from, from the aspect of, 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 of uh, spirituality and, and Catholicism. Um, you know, I went to all the Catholic schools, so I mean, we had religion, you know, right after yeah. lunch, I'll never forget that. <laughs> and we, we sort of learned uh, along the way. Well, when I was probably, I don't know how old I was, Sean, maybe six, I think three, four years, six till I was nine, I was an altar boy. Okay. At OLPH Church, and I remember, I was, you know, I was a, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, I you know, I, I can remember going to... Uh, Going to work, as it were, <laughs> and uh, go downstairs and used to put put on the uh, the gown that, that we wore, come up and you know meet the priests and you know they all got to know and then, you know they would tell us what to do and we went out. Oh gosh, I probably, I would probably serve maybe a hundred different different masses and different oh, wow. funerals. I, oh, I saw a lot of stuff there and I, I really enjoyed. It. My mother was always in the front row, <laughs> you know, and she would look at me and she go like this, like get your Shoulders back. I had a tendency to slouching. Get your shoulders back. Like, you know what I mean? Well, you, she seems, oh. seems to have been a force, like you've talked about, oh. the influence on your life. And I know you guys started the Forzani's Mother, Mother's Day race. Uh, I actually right. got a picture of me and my dad. My brother made the front page of The Sun or something back in the day when you guys uh, were doing that. I don't know exactly when you started it. This would have been early 80s that we ran it. Well, Sean, that, yeah, that was, uh, I'll tell you what happened there. Um, when I finished playing for the Stampeders, I finished in 1976. And so I I kind of retired early. I kind of wanted to try something else. I, I played eight years and I, you know what I did, Sean? I, I had a goal of making the all-star team as, as a linebacker and I made it. <laughs> and so I just wanted to do something else. So, um. I was teaching school. I was teaching at Airdrie, George McDougall High School. I was a phys ed teacher, counselor. And so um, I just finished my eighth year, and I, I went in for my ninth year, and I met with the general manager. And uh, I was tired of, of well, I didn't have eight. There were no agents at the time. I represented yeah. myself, you know. And I'd go in there and tell him I'm, I was an all-star. And he said, well, the general manager would always kind of come back and say things like, well, you know, you weren't that good. You had some bad games. And so... You know, it's like bringing your car in and you think the thing's worth, you know, $50,000 and he ends he end up giving you 10000 for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, oh yeah. So then I decided to apply for a teaching job in Germany at Canadian Air Force Base. Wow. And so I, I went to the general manager as a sort of a nothing to lose. And I said, look, it, I've been playing all these years. I'm a Canadian yeah, just a Canadian American thing. I don't know if it's yep. And and I said, listen, I I deserve more money, and it make a long. And so I asked for I think I asked for a ten thousand dollar raise. He went no, out of the question. I said I'm out of here. I'm done. So anyway, I quit. Uh, I quit that and I took that teaching job in 1976 in Germany, Baden Baden, Germany. Taught there for three years. Wow. And it was really a great experience. I mean, I, I lived in. I love traveling. I love adventure. And uh, I got married just before that, and, and uh, my wife uh, at the time was uh, had a son, Greg, and uh, I adopted him. I remember on the plane over, and uh, and that's where I lived. And so 
what one of the things I taught phys ed and counseling, like I said, on this military base, and it was the it was the kids from the from the Air Force. Yeah. So pilots and mechanics and even the army that protected the base. It was really quite an interesting thing. And then at nights or on the weekends, we traveled all over. You know, in, in the summer holidays, I traveled, I think I went to 76 countries in Europe. Wow. What a great experience. But um, what we did, we got involved with, after, but just right away. Um, on the weekends in these German cities, they had what they call Volkslaufs. Volkslaufs. Sorry, pardon my German. <laughs> Volkslaufs. And a Volkslauf is a people's walk. That's like, you know, on a Volkswagen... Yeah. It's a people's car. Okay. You know? <laughs> anyway, that's what it is in English. So we did this, and what you would do, you'd go to a small village, and you, they would advertise it before. It would cost you a little bit of money, five bucks or something. And you would walk 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, or 30 kilometers. And the walk through the village would through, be all the most interesting parts. You'd walk through wine fields and and you'd walk through castles or whatever the village was famous for. Okay. And when you finished, we used to do 20 kilometers. When, when we finished, we used to go in the little tent at the end, and they played oompa bands, and you'd have a beer, and, and you would get a medal. Okay. And, you know, I did this, uh, oh, God, for three years that I was there. I think I went. we went to, like, 75, 80 places. I got all these medals at home. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, the first year that I was there, my brother John came over to visit with his wife. You know, and uh, so I took him on a Volkslauf. He went, oh, wow, this is interesting. This is unbelievable. He says, I got to try that. I got to do this. And I said, you know, once we did, you know, we did the whole thing and we did the, the food after and we did. And so he came back and that's how we was inspired to uh, do the Mother's Day road race. Oh, wow. And he thought Mother's Day was the perfect time in the spring. And, and oh. I wasn't here for that for the first uh, two years that it happened. I think it had started in 70, 77, 78. May have been 1980, may have been a little bit later. Well, uh, yeah, I was part of one of the earlier ones, yeah. but it was amazing how many people showed up for those. Oh, I, I remember oh. The, the the starting gun going, and I stood there for like four minutes <laughs> waiting to start running. Oh, yeah, <laughs> at least. I mean, it got to a point, I think the most we ever got was something like 20,000. But that was, uh, my brother had a lot to do with spearheading that. And everybody participated in it. You know, we all made sure that, you know, and my, you know what, my, <laughs> my mother's job was at the end of the race, she would hand out the oranges, the oranges and the apples. Oh, okay. And that's what she did, you know. And, and then uh, we always, uh, with people in the stands, we always had these giveaway, you know, ticket things and people could win. And uh, we always uh, admired my mother for Mother's Day with a bouquet of flowers from the three brothers, you know what I mean? Oh. And that was always really a sort of a special time, you know. I got pictures of that in my house now, so yeah, that was a that, that was a really good time. And when unfortunately my brother passed away about seven years ago. I really miss him. But uh, you know, at that time they uh, nobody carried it forward, so it just sort of died. Well that's when Ghanaian Tire bought us out. Yeah. And so that sort of died. Well, and, and you guys were so generous. Like, so I worked with uh, Youth at Risk, and uh, you had changed the name to Sport Check for most of yeah. your, I, I, I think you had some other names for other businesses, but Sport Check was your anchor, right? Uh, well, what happened was uh, we were going along, uh, I would say probably maybe 1990, 1992, and uh, Sportcheck came to Calgary. They was a, they, were a, they were a company from uh, from Ontario. Okay. And spearheaded by a by a by a guy named Martin Bunting. He was the sort of the, the head guy behind it all. And they had the money from Quebec. It was from uh, Provoco, was a grocery store chain, and they sort of supplied the money to open these sport checks. And they opened four in Alberta. Well, we got really nervous because we had Frisannies, and that was only going to be one department for them, but then they had sort of general sporting goods. So we were really nervous about that, and uh, we just carried on. And a couple of years later, they were they went into some financial problems. And so I remember right around 1995, um, we decided to go public, and we you know we sold our or opened our shares up to the, to the general public, and uh, uh, it passed really well. And we came traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange, but with that money, 
We bought Sportcheck, the four stores. They weren't uh, doing very well and they were going to close the doors. Mm -hmm. And so we bought them for a song because the Provoco stores in Quebec, they weren't doing well either. So they didn't have any money for Sportcheck. So they just sort of died and uh, we bought them. And that's how we got the name Sportcheck. So we started to expand the Sportchecks and they sort of took the place of Frisani stores. So then we, we got to a point where we closed Frisani's and just kept the Sportchecks. And we, uh, we uh, you know, started to expand them from coast to coast, as it were. Yeah, oh well. Yeah. And you, so when I was working with Youth at Risk, and I, I'm having a brain fart, but I don't remember the, the name of the pro program that you had where you helped out kids, but I, uh, I'd go in with my Youth at Risk, and we'd, the, the lady would, here, come with me, and we'd get them basketball shoes and basketballs, oh, yeah. and, and just, we'd walk out, and... It made such a difference for these kids. Uh, like oh, I've got one job. one young man that I'm extremely proud of, who's now a teacher. Just oh. finished his first year at CSSD, oh, wow. and, and and he was a 15 year old that needed basketball shoes, and there was a lot of them were involved in crime in his community and his brothers, and oh wow! So those little things made a big difference for a lot of these young people. So your generosity was, was greatly appreciated. Well, I appreciate that, Sean. You know, one of our philosophies was, as you know, uh, we were just, you know, local sort of Italians that, you know, you know, my dad hardly had an edu education at all. My mother's had a grade 12 at St. Mary's and that was sort of really motivated me that, you know, she had a grade 12. But none of brothers and sisters of my parents had any you know, any formal degree or education. And and that, that sort of motivated us to sort of carry on. And, and when we sort of started to get a good size, we never did forget our roots. You know, we're, we're Calgarians. We're from Bridgeland Riverside. And whatever we could do, we would do. And we were heavily involved. In, you know what, we had a, we had an office uh, of two people. We would get in the vicinity, honestly, Sean, maybe... Uh, 75 to 100, maybe 200 phone calls a week for donations. Oh, wow. You know, the boxing team needs so and so and so on. You know, the curling club, you know, the so and the this and that. We, we ended up doing, doing some social, but they were handpicked. That must have been a good one that you had. I can't, you know, I can't remember. Yeah. There's so many in shop. There's hundreds. Th this was a specific program that you ran through Sport oh. Check where people could. Donate towards it as well. And oh, thank you, thank you, Sean. But you know yeah. what? We were my brother John. Uh, we all got together, and his philosophy was, and as we agreed, was health. So we donated money to heart machines, to gastro, you know, all technology. We've got. Uh, if you go to, uh, uh, we we've got we invested in a, you know, one of the people that took care of a lot of our marketing. Um, it was really interesting. He had twin babies that were one pound, one oh. pound. And so there was, they were really young and this is before they, so there was a, there was a certain kind of um, something that you put these babies into. What do you call Incubator. those? Incubator. Incubator. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, uh, they were the first, one of the first ones here in Calgary, this incubator. And one of the first ones is with these twins that belonged to the, this guy that was taking care of our, our, our marketing. Oh wow! And son of a gun, we didn't. Those babies lived through, and they're and they're young young men and ladies today. You know. Wow! But that's, one pound. You know? That's so that's, that's incredible. Almost, so we did a lot of that. So if you go to the colonoscopy clinic, you know we got Frizzani's and McPhail. Yeah. McPhail, I think, did Southern Trucking, but we got in, together and it's still there today. Oh wow! The, the colonoscopy clinic. Then the heart. That's not my favorite thing to do. Just yeah, so yeah. You know. <laughs> you know what they call them in the. Uh, in the Navy, they used to call him a rear admiral. But, uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, but so, so we did those sort of things, and, and it was really good. We felt good that we could help the community, and that was the key thing. So one of the other things we talk about in this is, is uh, food. And I'm sure from an Italian family, oh. is, is, there, is there something that you prepare that uh, brings <laughs> people back again? You mean... How do you mean? I mean now or? Yeah. Well, do you have a favorite dish or is there something that you prepare uh, that? Uh... Well, I'll tell you what, Sean. Somebody once asked me, if you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, 
One, like one type of meal for the rest of your life. You can't change. What would that meal be? And for me, it would be spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> I probably, for John, Tom, and I probably, my mother cooked pasta, I would say at least five days a week. And she ended up making her own pasta. So I, I just oh, wow. love pasta. And, uh, but you know, Sean, we're going to worry about our weight. You know? I know, <laughs> so, I know. So now I got I to gotta do things and eat things that, you know, don't taste that good and, you know, but my love is certainly pasta and, and pizza. Uh, I go to the Italian club a lot, and that's one of my favorite places. They do a great job there. And I'm going to have to get Mario to bring me down there and give it a try again. So, Oh, yeah. 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 Sean, I'll take you down there. You're welcome there. Okay, you okay. do that sometime. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. So a lot of our young men are struggling today, even knowing what a man is. What advice, because you've been around for a while, you, you've, you've, played professional sports, you've been a teacher, and you talk about counseling. Like, what advice do you give a young man today? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, Sean, you know, I, I think what you've got to do is you, you really got to, you, you got to have, you got to have a supernatural power. Like, you got to have God and Jesus Christ in your life. That's number one. I can remember when I was young. I mean, I used to pray before practice, before games, I mean, I used to pray to, to Christ to help me be successful and not to get injured. And, you know, I, th I think you have to have a real friend. Number two, you have to really, you got to believe in yourself. Like, you, you got to believe in yourself. You got to have a focus of what you like and what you're good at and, and give it a try and don't give up. I mean, there's, there's so many distractions today. There's way more distraction today that when I was a kid. I mean, when I was a kid, um, we used to go outside, play outside. We had, there was, I could talk about a hundred different games we used to do and, and everything we did. And it was, it was uncomplicated. Came home and we said, we had dinner around the table. You know, it was just basic, basic things. But we had those today. Oh my gosh. You know, the phone, the computer, everybody's all over, you know, they're just lost. They're lost in the, in sort of the uh, the gravity of distraction, like it, it's pulling us down. Like and, and uh, it's really hard. I you know I you just sometimes you just have to put all those things down and really get into a, a contemplative mode and believe in yourself and never give up. Never give up on 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 anything of of your dreams. But you know but you you got to somehow get away from these distractions before you can think about you know, creating your dreams and following them. That's, that's awesome. Do you agree so you, with that? Well, you, you, you brought up a couple really good points, uh, like the family meal. That's one of the oh. best uh, drug prevention programs there is. If, you, if They say if, if you have five family meals a week, mm -hmm. you greatly reduce your kids' use of yeah. drugs. And then the the other thing you, you talk about is is like that, prayer so i'm teaching i coach the senior boys rugby team at st oh, francis right? and oh, yeah. so you know saying make me an instrument of your peace the st francis prayer really doesn't work for me as a coach when i'm trying to get the guys ready for a game so yeah. i'm teaching them the st michael prayer defend us in battle be our safeguard <laughs> against the wickedness and snares of the devil so yeah. the boys and it also exposes the boys to uh, a prayer and uh, you talk about growing up. So I grew up, we moved around a little bit as a kid, but Huntington Hills, yep. like Beddington was all farmer's fields mm -hmm. and I'd ride my bikes through there. And yeah, the, lots of fond memories of, of, of getting uh, just out there and, and we didn't have cell phones and all that oh, other I stuff. Know. And, and uh, we probably did things that our mom would never be happy that we did. <laughs> But uh, we survived, and uh, and and it's so. F t this week's been a hard week because I've been working at a high school where there was a one of the students murdered, and oh. and uh, and it's just so sad. And that was one of the comments from uh, a family member of his that just said, "Your parents want to see you around the family table, and mm -hmm. that's where we need to, I think, get back to focusing." Uh, on inviting people either into the pub or around the family 
table, just engaging people one on one rather than texting. <laughs> and well, you know, Sean, a lot of that comes from the family. You know, um, I mean, you know, everybody today, it seems like everybody has pressures. Like the mother and father, like the mother has pressures. You know, she may have a, a you know a job and. You know, her pressures are to come back from work and take care of the kids. And, and you know, the dad, you know, he's working and there's pressure on him to, to execute and, and to do well at work. And then when he comes home, they're almost played out. And then the kids, you know, they're playing with their... So so everybody loses focus in the communication side of things, you know. And, and, and everybody's just busy and they look at TV and they look at whatever else they're looking at, the internet and, and the computers, and, and they lose themselves. And all of a sudden, they get up the next day, and it's the same thing. And the next day, it's the same thing. So we're growing apart, and we don't know where we are. Yeah. You know, Sean, I can remember when I was in high school. Let me tell you, one of the things that I, that I remember most vividly is that uh, I remember in grade 10, I went to the library. Remember the library in high school? <laughs> you know, I went to the library, and uh, I got this Sports Illustrator. I saw this Sports Illustrator. I thought that was pretty good because I, I, I liked sports at the time, you know. And I'm opening up, and I'm looking under on, on this, and I noticed college football, and I noticed all the people and 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 some of the players, and I know they're at university, and there's all these girls around, and there's you know they're they're intermingling, and then the sports itself, and they're playing in front of all these fans, and I really got hooked. I started dreaming about that. I actually started going home, and I just, oh boy, before I went to bed, I said, gee, is this possible? Is this? I'd love to. That's I really like to get there. How do I get there? And this is where I started to play football. And this is where I started to, you know, I started to do, I went as far as I could. And then I started, hey, that was good. I went to the next level. And that was good. I went to the next level. I never stopped trying. And so all of a sudden, I had an opportunity to go to university and achieve this goal that I saw in high school. Honestly, Sean. And, that, and it was much like that goal. You know, being in college, you know, playing in front. You know, I remember playing. I remember, Sean, the biggest game I ever played was... Uh, was uh, we played University of Nebraska, Utah State played in Nebraska. There were seventy-seven thousand people in the stand. Seventy-seven thousand. Oh wow, Sean, when when we played, like Utah State was a smaller school, but it's a good size. But but I can remember looking at the, their bench, and they had they, they had they had tiers of benches, like three <laughs> tiers high, and they had the starting lineups, and the other guys were sitting on the benches, and I'm going, I'm out there playing, you know, I'm out there playing defense, and I'm looking at this, going, oh wow. This is unbelievable. <laughs> and so, you know, Sean, I think that's it. I think it's just, uh, we've really lost the communication. I think the, well, you know, I think parents really have to grab hold of this. And when they leave their work, they have to almost take a deep breath of air. When they get into that car to come home, it's family. It's family on the way home. When they get home and put their first foot out of the car, it's family. How are you doing? What's happening? You know, play, take a serious interest in your kids. Like you said, dinner around the table, chats, one-on-one. -on -one. You know, how are things going? You know, that that's the problem is that, you know, the dad comes home, the mother comes home, one of them is cooking, and they're sort of, and, and there's all kinds of things happening around them, and then they serve the food, and, and it's just, uh, it's, a, it's just, a, I, I think it, it can be a mess. Well, and one of the And things... it's hard to correct that, too, yeah. Sean, like, you know, as you know. Well, when I worked with young people one of the things we talked to them about is uh your hopes dreams goals and aspirations which you talked about and now who are the people that are going to pick the team of people that are going to help you achieve that and it then they start thinking about the people that they're hanging around with too who really don't have that interest in helping them achieve those goals so it, it helps the young person understand think when they're picking the team because they can all picture okay you're the captain of the basketball team uh, it, the pickup game and yeah. you start picking yeah who you want on your team you want the t people that are going to help you good win point. very good point. and so uh i want to thank you for taking time out of your day and just before is there a go-to saint that you that you jeff cabins who you met at a, the conference well say joseph all right <laughs> That was your conference, then. Yeah, so, so he's my buddy, too. So 
Joe, I don't know if you're on a time frame. Are you time frame for me? No. I want to tell you, tell you a little bit about sort of my... my I've always been uh, spiritually involved in in with Jesus Christ and God. I've always I've always been that way. And so after I was an altar boy, I kept... Even when I went to Utah State, they had a Catholic church there. And I went to Catholic church. I remember, you know, Sean, I remember one... My second or third year there, I was up in the, uh, used to sit up in the choir and look down. That's where I'd like to sit. They didn't have a choir, but <laughs> but I remember, you know, it was an earthquake down there. I couldn't believe it. I, I remember everything was shaking. I, I it lasted about 10 seconds. I didn't know what was going on. But, you know, I, I maintained my religion there. I maintained my Catholic faith there. And uh, always, I think I told you, I alluded on it before, always, 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 always before a game, always, always. I would pray to the Lord, not to win, but to make sure that I didn't get hurt and that nobody else got hurt and that I could play the best to my ability. That's all I asked for. And you know, when I said really close prayers like that, it really sort of relieved me. I knew that I had an aid and an extra energy to carry me forward. That was really important. So I carried that all the way through. When I went to Europe, carried on. They had uh, I was a they had a different face in Germany and the Baden. I I still st went to the Catholic Church, um, did went to the Mass, and uh, you know every Sunday and and so um, I started taking my mother to church at Saint Saint Peter's. Oh, and she left. To, she knew all the priests. She was at OLPs for years. Yeah. Then she moved up to uh, Silver Springs. Uh, yes, Edgemont yeah. area. Yeah, so yeah, okay. that's right. Uh, no, what's the name of that? There's another district oh, uh, right by Edgemont, um, Arbor Lake. Arbor Lake. She had a, okay. lived in the Carmel. And so she, I would go there on Sundays. I tried two or three Sundays a month. I would go drive her to church. But she used to go to church seven days a week. She was there with, with ladies that she knew. I know. And you know what? My mother, bless her soul, she... She, I'd like to know if anybody could beat her in the number of rosaries. <laughs> she would say rosaries. Sean, every day, all the time, like rosary, rosary. And she prayed to God. She must have went through that rosary like so many times and just praying to God. And I know my mother was a very giving person. She prayed for us and she prayed for humanity. She never said a bad word about anybody. No. And what a great role example it was for me. You know, but anyway, I became so... But as I went to the Catholic Church on this is interesting with my mother, I I kind of got a little disillusioned with the, with the with the way the the a lot of the priests the way they they weren't speaking English like I didn't understand them, and I started to lose interest. I wanted somebody to teach me more about Christ and about God and about the Bible, and I wanted to learn more. And a friend of mine took me to Center Street Church. Mm -hmm. Uh, about seven years ago, and um, I went there, and they've got a great, they got a, they don't have priests, they have pastors, and uh, they have a great pastor there, remember, Pastor Henry Shore, he's got a PhD in, in uh, religion, and, uh, but when he, they really go by the Bible and Jesus Christ, you know, and, uh, but when he gave a speech, he compared everything, all our living, to parables in the Bible, you know, to the way, you know, we live today. And uh, I really got a, I really thought it was a great education for me. And so I started going there on Sundays. But, you know, occasionally I would go with friends to, to Catholic Church. But the one fundamental principle of the whole thing, 100%, is that I, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he's the Son of God. So whether, you know, religion, Catholic religion or you know what I mean? Not the Christ was the center of it, you know? And um, I don't know. So when I came to the God Squad mm -hmm. two weeks ago, that was fairly new for me because I haven't really been in a mass for probably, when my mother died about 10 years ago, maybe seven or eight years. And boy, it came back to me really quick. And then the way people like, who was your speaker? Jeff Gavins. Jeff or... Gavins, all of them. Then they talked about a lot of the things I wanted to hear. I wanted to talk, I want to hear more about Christ. And Jeff was talking about how to introduce yourself to Christ with people that, that are non-believers. And, 
And you know, th that's what I wanted to learn. I've used that 10 times already. <laughs> and, and this is what I want to learn. So, you know, um, well, like, you're in the right pub. <laughs> Anyway, I just thought I'd tell you that. that I, uh, I really appreciate that, that, that honesty appreciate. and open, and, and thank you for sharing your story. That's, <laughs> that's, I, I feel so blessed to have you here, and uh, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, the origin of whiskey is a word called Ishkabaha, which means water of life, hmm. and my prayer is, is that, that right? no, you I and know. I continue to lead many souls <laughs> to the true water of life. Well, so I, I'm, I'm almost empty, but <laughs> we'll, make, we'll, we'll make sure it, it cheers. doesn't, cheers. It's my honor to be here. Thank you very much for the offer. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Oh, that's great. Chuck. I hope you are enjoying this content. Please like and subscribe, share with a friend. Also, go to godsquad.ca where you can pray with us and for us and consider donating so that we can continue our mission reaching men wherever they're at. Thank you as we begin our episode.